Hello and welcome to this INE presentation of Understanding the Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP as it's more well known. I'm Keith Bogart and I'm going to be your instructor for this set of videos. So let's just go through some, uh, some basic preliminary stuff here to set your expectations as to what this course is designed to do, what it's not designed to do, and talk a little bit about the structure and what topics we're going to cover. So let's start with course objectives. What this course is designed to help you understand the usage of various fields in the TCP header. So certainly if you're starting out at the CCNA level or higher, you need to know what all the various fields are of the TCP header and what they're used for. And so we're going to go through that. It's designed to help you understand the basics of how TCP connections are set up and torn down. There's a lot that can happen when a connection is being set up or torn down, a lot of variables that can affect that, how fast or how slow it is. We're going to cover all of that as well. And a better understanding of the reliability mechanisms of TCP. You know, as you start studying TCP, you learn that it is connection oriented, it is reliable. And at the CCNA level, you start learning a little bit about, okay, well, that's because when something goes out, it has a sequence number, sort of an identifier for that segment. And the sender says, okay, I need to get an acknowledgement back so I know that you got that segment and then I'll send you something else. Well, we're going to go into that in a lot more detail in this course. And th that's just a little bit about the reliability of TCP. There's a lot more built into it than just that to give it its inherent reliability. How this course will help you? Well, certainly if, you're, if you have some TCP packet captures and like Wireshark or something, this will hopefully help you to analyze those a little bit better and to understand what you're looking at. And of course, if you're preparing for some certification exam that requires you to know TCP, this will assist you with that. So that's what this course is. What about what this course is not? This is not a comprehensive coverage of all things TCP related. Once you start digging into TCP, you will realize that there's, I think, probably more specifications and more RFCs on TCP than there are actually specifications to build a rocket to Venus. I mean, it seems like that. There's just so many specifications out there on various options and timers and this and that. We'd be going through TCP for literally a week if we were to cover all that stuff. That being the case, I think you're going to be pretty happy with the level of coverage that we do get into in this series of videos. Uh, so we're not going to cover every possible timer, state event trigger, and options, although we will be getting into a lot of that stuff. We're not going to go into the detailed nuances of how TCP is implemented on different operating systems. You know, one of the things about TCP is that the people who wrote all these specifications they left a lot of leeway as far as, you know, what should this initial timer be? Or what should the maximum size of this be? Or how fast or how slowly should things change? And so all that's different on whether you're dealing with Windows or Linux or Unix or the, you know, iOS operating system of Microsoft or of, of Apple. So we're not going to get into that, okay? I'm not going to get into what the different timers and stuff are for each individual operating system. Although that stuff is pretty easy to find. You know, when I was researching some of that on, on Microsoft, and, and I will sometimes refer to that. I might say, oh, Microsoft Windows has this default value or this default thing. So I found that with just a little bit of Googling, if that's the kind of stuff you're interested in, usually you can find it pretty easily. So if you are interested in all that level of detail, number one, I'd recommend reading the book TCP IP Illustrated. And I give you the authors here. Awesome book, uh, very, very detailed. Um, you'll be, you basically do not want to have any distractions and you don't want to have too much coffee in your brain when you're reading that book. And then of course there's tons of RFCs and I'm going to be referencing those RFCs as we go through the course. So what am I going to be covering? Well, let's talk a little bit about some of those topics. I'm going to start with uh, an introduction to TCP, just a brief history of it, you know, how it came about, uh, the initial RFCs, and then we're going to go into uh, the typical connection establishment. You know, barring any unforeseen weirdness or gotchas, what does a, a typical generic connection look like as it's built, 
or what they say established, and as it's torn down. We're going to look at TCP segment creation. How does TCP know when to create a segment? As, as bytes are coming in from the upper layer application, how does TCP know, okay, I need to stop now, package this up into a segment, and away it goes? How does it answer that type of question? We'll look at the basic finite state machine. Um, as you learn about TCP, one of the things, I don't think at the CCNA or CCNP level, but possibly at the CCIE level, some of the stuff we'll start expecting to know are the various states that TCP can go through, like the fin weight one, fin weight two, the time weight state, the established state. And they, you're, gonna want be, you're gonna wanna know, what does that state mean? What caused me to get into the state and what has to happen for me to move out of that state into the next one. And so we're gonna look at that. We're gonna go into the details of TCP sequence numbers. They're not as simple as you might expect. And so we'll talk about how a TCP implementation comes up with what's called the initial sequence number. And it's just not the number one, like we would hope, it's something else. And how do sequence numbers increment and how are they used in the actual segments and acknowledgements as they go back and forth? We'll talk about missed acknowledgements. What does the transmission control protocol do when an acknowledgement is missed? There's actually more than one thing it can possibly do, and so we'll talk about that. Continuing on, we'll talk about the sliding window mechanism. You know, what is the sliding window? What's this thing called the usable window versus the sent window versus the bytes not sent and not ready and all this stuff? So we'll talk about what that window is and when they say sliding, what do they mean by that? We'll go into the details of all that. Something called selective acknowledgements. This is not something that was part of the original TCP implementation, but it's something that most operating systems do implement now as an optional TCP variable, and we'll talk about how that works. We'll talk about TCP resets. If you ever see that in a sniffer capture or something, what is it? Why did it happen? What are some of the things that could cause the TCP reset? We'll talk about the TCP push function and the TCP urgent function. We'll go into both of those. And then we'll finish up with the TCP congestion mechanisms. We'll talk first about, about, about an overview of, you know, what is congestion from the standpoint of TCP? Because remember, TCP is not connected to the cable, right? It doesn't actually know what your NIC card is doing. It doesn't know, you know, if, if Ethernet or Frame Relay is having problems with congestion. So how does TCP know when congestion is happening? And what does it do about it? Well. What it does about it is the very last thing we'll talk about. We'll talk about slow start, fast recovery, and fast retransmit. And then by that time, your head will have exploded, and you'll want to come back to these videos and watch them again. So all of this being the case, there are some prerequisites. Uh, if you're coming straight out of college with a sociology degree, you probably do not want to watch this series of videos. Uh, there is a little bit of networking knowledge you're going to want to have under your belt to make sense of all of this stuff. So, number one, I'm expecting that everybody understands what the OSI reference model is, that you know what the seven layers are and what the names of the seven layers, and you know where TCP fits in all of this. Uh, I'm assuming that you understand the concept of encapsulating and decapsulating data. So, if those words, encapsulating and decapsulating, if you're like, what? What's that? Okay, probably want to pause, Google those terms, learn it, and come back here. Uh, I'm also assuming that you understand the basics of IP and data transmission of IP. I, I'm, un, I'm hoping you understand what can happen to an IP datagram or an IP packet as it moves through a network, like, for example, fragmentation. I'm going to make reference to fragmentation every once in a while. Fragmentation isn't really something that TCP is aware of. There's nothing in TCP that knows what fragmentation is or how to handle fragmentation. However, when a bunch of bytes are placed into a TCP segment, once it gets down to IP and away it goes into your network, there's a possibility that some router somewhere could fragment that packet. And so now what started out as one segment might end up being fragmented into multiple little pieces. And so that could actually affect how the acknowledgments come back or how they might not come back. And we'll talk about that as well. 
And of course, I'm going to make mention of something called Layer 2 MTU, Maximum Transmission Unit. So I'm hoping that you understand what is meant by the term MTU. Now, if you have any questions, I've already mentioned this to the people who are watching live right now. For them who are watching live, ask your questions at any point in time. Now, if you're watching this video series in the future that's been recorded and you're still a little unsure of something, something's still a little vague, how do you get your questions answered? Well, there's a couple of ways. Number one, I would recommend that the primary method that you use is to go to INE's website and log in with your member's account. From here, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the Resources pull-down menu and select IEOC, which is the INE Online Community. And then from here, we've got tons of online communities that should come up in just a moment, hopefully. Come on. There it is. Uh, so you want to click on CCIE forums. Don't, you know, if you're a little freaked out saying, well, wait a second, I'm not a CCIE. That, that's okay. Just click on CCIE forums anyway. Because you'll see that after this comes up, there's forums for CCNA, CCNP, routing and switching, security. There's just like tons of stuff in here. So if you have questions about TCP that are not answered by this video series, I would probably recommend that you put those questions into the uh, just the CCIE routing and switching general, or actually CCI routing and switching technical, either one of those would probably be a good place to put detailed technical questions about uh, TCP. And the benefit of putting your question there is that other people can benefit from seeing your question and they can benefit from seeing the answers that came back so you can share the knowledge that you learned. Now, every once in a while, doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while, somebody might post a question in one of these forums and maybe a day will go by and you don't get an answer. Maybe it's because, honestly, nobody knew what the answer was or people just didn't have a chance to look at it. So if that's the case, if you post a question in one of these forums and like a day or two goes by and you don't get an answer, well, you see right here, here's my email address. Uh, feel free to unicast your question directly to me and I'll take my best shot at researching it and getting an answer back to you. Also, you can see my Twitter account right there. So if you want to keep on top of what the latest and greatest courses are that are coming out uh, or any date changes or anything to my courses, feel free to uh, follow me there on Twitter as well.